Hey everyone, welcome to Transformation Time. Every Thursday I host an episode of either Transformation Time or Re Behind the Scenes. My name is Diana Lazarazzo and today's guest speaker is Angie Petty, Angie Petty John. On Transformation Time, our guest speakers are real estate investors looking to share looking to share with you their experiences and their personal development journey so we'll get the deep dive into the changes they've gone through to get to where they are and what fears they encountered along the way so if you guys are ready to get started and meet our guest speaker i'm going to just uh, invite her on so give me one second Okay. Hi, Diana. Hey, Angie. How are you? I'm good. Oh, for some I'm reason, good. you're on a black screen. I am? Yeah, I don't see you. Oh, no. Um, I am on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why it's not popping up now. Oh, here. Hang on. No, that's showing that I'm, I'm now not on this... Do you maybe flip it? Are you or are you blocking it or something? Um, While we wait for Angie to get it, let me know, guys. Um, what type of real estate investor are you? Actually, something I've been very interested in these days is accountability. And and um, since we're getting close to like the end of the year's getting closer and closer and i know a lot of us are start starting to set our goals and uh, just curious on uh, um if you guys have started thinking about that what uh what goals you have for next year if you're wrapping up are you guys wrapping up and trying to get your goals uh your your goals for this year done and uh yeah just curious to know what you guys have to say about that and accountability are you a person that likes to have someone, you know, there to help you and make you accountable? Um, or even like that, your community for motivation? I personally find um, specifically, especially both. I mean, I love accountability, but having the community, the right people around you, I feel like that's always something so helpful. Angie, do you want to just try to come back on? and see yeah. maybe it's just a glitch sure jump off and come back on yeah try jumping off and come back in again it, and maybe it's just a, a little glitch yeah okay hang on mm -hmm. so are you guys real estate investors how is it yeah like let me know what you guys think of uh setting goals um and uh, accountability. I'm curious on your thoughts on accountability. Um, I find that like that, I, I notice that once we get into groups, we start kind of grouping together with different people that we get along with that we may not even do business with, um, but we use each other to motivate each other. A lot of us have mentors. Curious on your guys' thoughts. And uh, I actually wanted to share a story, something I found very interesting. So I don't know if you guys know the definition of um, assumption. I found it very interesting. Like I never knew exactly what the definition was. Um, and, oh, let me just see. I never knew what the definition, okay, let me pause actually, because I might just pause, go live, okay. Oh, we're a black screen. Do you just want to do it on a black screen? We can just still have you know the conversation what? like this. <laughs> yeah, let's let's just do this. I'm I'm terribly sorry. No, no problem. Uh, but thank you so much for coming on. 
And let's start with, uh, and we can just imagine what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can uh, check me out on our Instagram ourselves. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But let's start with just um, just telling the viewers a little bit a little bit about yourself, your history with because you're at, you're in real estate on both sides. You're you're not only an investor, but you're also a mortgage broker. So just uh, tell people a little bit about your history, about who you are. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Diana, for asking me to be on here tonight. We're super excited. So I'm one half of the Petty John team. I'm Angie Petty John. I'm the CEO of um, uh, the Petty John team. And my daughter, Victoria, is um, the other half. And uh, together, um, we say that our two brains um, come together to make one. But I, I, I really feel sometimes we're two brains in, in there. It's... it's uh, um, We've got, we've got a lot happening. Anyhow, my business started uh, several years ago. I, I was with uh, TD Bank as a mortgage specialist. And very early on in my career, um, I really just focused in on wanting to make money. Uh, I didn't really know much about, you know, goal setting and business planning. And I just was wanting to not be a stay-at-home mom anymore. And I just wanted to make money. And I wanted to, to matter in this world. So that's where my quest really started. Um, and I think that's where my my faults um, uh, began as well, because uh, without a clear plan and without taking my business really seriously on, on all kinds of level, levels and setting goals and, and, and sticking to goals, um, I really was lost out there. Um, and I found for my first, I want to say the first seven years anyway, I kind of bounced around searching for that it thing you know that that would stick with me and, and all along it was always there it was me you know I suffered like most people from imposter syndrome and limiting limiting beliefs and um, you know uh, not knowing how to overcome these fears uh, until I guess it was five years ago when I really had no choice but to pull up my, in Italian, we call underwear mutandis. So <laughs> I had to pull up my big girl mutandis. And um, it was like literally it, like shit or get off the potty here. And that was 2018. And um, that's when the clarity came. You know, I, I joined the Windrose group and... Um, Claire Drage is very well known in the real estate industry and, and an icon for me as a uh, mortgage broker, uh, very well known and um, like totally kick ass woman who took us and mentored us. And um, I continue to be mentored by by Claire to this day. And, and one of my major successes is because of her. And, and her involvement in the business. I started taking my business seriously like a business, wasn't a part-time gig, wasn't to supplement my husband's income. Um, you know, it, it was meant as a true business. And that's, that's mm -hmm. when I turned around five years ago and um, started putting- Amazing, some... so what exactly happened five years ago to make you like that like start realizing to change to make changes like what was that yeah. <laughs> thing that kind of brought you like i need to start doing something or what it was yeah it was literally i i fell to my knees you know i belonged to another brokerage that everything that could have gone wrong went wrong you know there was it went bankrupt there was fraudulent activities with them not me <laughs> um the it just everything collapsed around me and I had no choice I had no choice but to figure it out and figure it out fast and I did a ton of research as to where I could go and uh, one of my uh, clients and investors um, said to me look you've got to join uh, you got to join Claire she's like-minded she's she I know where you want to go with your business and she can take you places. So I had a conversation with Claire because of this investor. And um, he's now on my team, which is hilarious. Um, and um, she taught us how to run a business. And we, you know, each year, Victoria and I 
um, go away and we have a business plan session. We debrief the year before, we set goals, and I, I don't give myself any excuses for not reaching goals. For example, in 2020, so I told you the history of going through um, with a brokerage that everything that could have possibly gone wrong went wrong, fraud, you name it. And I thought, okay, well, what else can go wrong? And then a friggin' pandemic, are you kidding me? Like we're shutting down because of this. I just rose above it all and here I'm going to collapse again. And um, um, I, had a, uh, I have a, um, a business coach and I sat with her and I said, well, I guess there goes my, my goals for this year. And she says, are you kidding me right now? She says, no. She says, you don't, you don't change your goals. You change how you're going to get there. And the, like that aha moment happened to me in the business. And, um, you, you know, obviously the market allowed for this as well, but we, we just flourished that year and surpassed our goals. And then the following year, I, I purposely set my goals for 50, like, uh, for uh, doubling from the year before, and we hit that. And this year, we're we're on track to double double that. So we're um, we don't give ourselves any excuses. Um, and the, the you know the mindset for me is is the most important. You know, I I I'm I, I pray, I meditate, I do whatever I need to do to put myself um, to ground myself for the day. Um, and, and most importantly, over these years, I've dumped my, I've dumped the naysayers out of my life. And that was pretty harsh, but I've dumped the naysayers out of my life. And I surround myself with wonderful, positive, encouraging people. You know, they, you know, that saying, you want to surround yourself with people who are going to be talking good about you when you're not in the room. Those, those, that's my support system. And I couldn't, I, there's, I just couldn't do that with, without them. I just couldn't do what I do now without them. Um, our team has That's grown, you know, we, I, I, I've always wanted to empower women. And I realized recently, it doesn't really matter whether I empower women, men, children, whoever it is, it's a human being, it's a soul. I, my purpose in life is to is to empower and whether it's through my mortgage business whether it's through you know being a real estate investor in what i do um helping people with housing and uh, housing needs um that's i do that and i do that with with care so mm -hmm. when i focused in on myself five years ago and said who am i um, there was a big dichotomy going on in my life. You know, I was a phys ed grad. I should have been a phys ed teacher. And um, here I am in real estate. And it's like, it's kind of such a, a, a strange combination. But really, I wanted to be a teacher. At the heart of me, at the heart of Angie Petty John, at the heart of the Petty John team, we're teachers. Um, and whether it comes from teaching you know, volleyball on the court or basketball on the court. I'm a huge sports fan, by the way. Or, um, or, or teaching mortgages, still teaching. And it's still teaching from love and, and, and from my heart. Um, that's, that's what I do. That's what we do. And, yeah, I love it. And, and um, that even just shows because that you're, you know, you can do what you like, like that you love teaching. And it doesn't matter what it is that you teach as long as you're enjoying what you teach so you know it is sometimes i feel like it gets confusing when you're thinking in one mind thinking that oh the only thing i could teach is being a teacher and then let's say whatever happens maybe there isn't enough jobs out there or whatever the reason was but you, you know it's kind of that conflict of like this is what i like to do but i'm not finding it but but you found other ways to teach that's a great and amazing point that you've made yeah. And yeah. I also wanted to actually go back to something really important that you also spoke about that I wanted to reiterate because I just find it so important too, is the excuses. I think it was a great thing that you said that because in like, like you were saying that you're thinking to change your goals 
and you're making excuses and your coach helped you to realize that that was an excuse and i just wanted to again reiterate that because a lot of us will make excuses to not continue moving forward and um and what you know what you did was that you started now opening up your mind to different po- other possibilities which i think was like it, it was very interesting that you said that so i just wanted to reiterate that cuz i thought that was really yeah. cool that you that you basically basically you're having a mind shift happen there right i'm assuming, that's what i feel like it sounded like you went through right and you started yeah. figuring out how is this going to happen that's exactly it diana it's it you know my role in the business is the the networking and uh, everything shut down in march of 2020 and and i can't meet clients face to face so this was we were told on wednesday you know office is closed everything's closed and by friday i was already live on facebook probably one of the first brokers out there live on facebook doing friday morning chats with angie i i didn't have a clue what i was doing i didn't have a clue but i knew that i needed to reach um as many people as possible and um and and we did and i still getting comments over that and happy to announce that we are going to be revisiting that and bringing that back um in um in november so um yeah it's a mindset That's shift amazing. so we can't so my role is to meet people how else am i going to meet people all right well, let's go on let's figure out this this online platform which you know it's no secret i'm you know i'm in in my 50s and and technology is, was never my thing um again no excuses so what so what and 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 i learned it and i mm-hmm. you know learned how to do zoom i never knew i didn't even know what zoom was back then learned how to do zoom started to do webinars and and now our whole business is online everything is online docu sign panda docs you you name it um mm-hmm. it's it's not giving yourself excuses and also what i've learned in my years is um and and like the you know what is going to hit the fan it always mm-hmm. does it always does so what what are you going to do about it right um and and just being ahead of it all the time and not giving yourself excuse i i think that's a, a main reason why we we've been flourishing and and now mm-hmm. during this period where everyone's complaining that there're no deals to be had you know we're we're the brokers of choice real estate investors are are coming to us and the the other side of our business you you touched on it um or me anyway i i am a real estate investor um i i am a private lender uh during <clears throat> those years when when everything um hit the fan and before the last 5 years um my husband and i lost a lot of money during that time frame and rather than sitting down and and crying about it you know we we tightened up how we view deals uh what does the borrower look like uh what is the geographical location are we interested in what loan of value do we want and that's what i'm teaching my clients who are private lenders now to set that guideline for yourself as a private lender um and and to be wise that things are different now and how are you going to change with it don't just sit back and say well i'll just have my money sitting in the bank do, doing nothing during this time frame um No, there's still there's some wonderful deals out there right now, but you need to shift how you're viewing them. Maybe you're not mm-hmm. going to do the 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 Sudbury deals right now because you want to drive there. But mm-hmm. setting yourself those those um your own lending guidelines I call them is is crucial and adjusting them as we go in this market is crucial. 100%. And I think another great point that you made is that you yourself are a private lender. I felt I feel like when you are also lending, I feel like it gives you another view as a mortgage broker because you're also in it too, and I feel like you kind of have a different view and it helps you even understand your clients better. Would you agree with that? 
I I do agree 100% with that comment. I know that because of what happened, because we lost our money, because of of the, you know, um, just coming out of the fire, I don't want anybody to feel that way. Um, so I'm able to teach from a different place, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. 100%. And another thing you spoke about that I wanted to um, understand a little bit more was that you talk about, you spoke about that you want to empower people. And normally, I, I'm curious, because normally when you want to do something is because you've had a time in your life that was, you felt maybe powerless. Is that true? Did you have a time in your life that you felt powerless and that made you, uh, or what was the reason, what's the reason behind the, you know, wanting to empower people? Yeah, that's, um, it's interesting. So I've done a lot of work on it. Um, yeah, um, through my, you know, teens and, and early 20s, I, I did have um, a boyfriend that was very abusive and me mentally abusive. He never hit me or anything, but um, uh, it definitely not to diminish what he did at all. It was a horrible experience. And I remember uh, specifically, you know, him saying things to me like, um, you know, when you drive, when you're on the subway station, because I lived in, in Toronto, when you're on the subway station, I don't want you looking at anybody. Don't look, just look on the ground. I, I, he told me what to wear. He told me where to look. And even though he was not with me, he controlled he controlled everything about me. And um, um, in my last year of university, one of my profs, um, you know, he, he gave me the strength to, to walk away from that. I didn't realize I could, right? Um, mm -hmm. And because of that, um, again, another time in my life where, you know, I rose above, um, I just have this fire in me. And, and that's where... You know, my, my team with Victoria and my, my junior underwriter, Naomi, and our, our um, marketing manager, Caitlin, and, and, and Kelsey, all these powerful young women, um, I, I want them, I want better for them than what I had. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, yeah, that's just... That's, a, that's amazing that you could... Like that, because we don't realize, and it's happening to us even now, these mental blockages, and majority of them are, I, I think all of them are from out, they're outside, right? Be it, for example, in your case, it was your boyfriend at the time was creating these, like, mental blocks for you, and, you know, other people, like, even our parents, like, our parents are always doing amazing things and trying to help us, but mm -hmm. you know, they're teaching us from their points of view. And, and even those things some, will give certain blocks that we think that we need to do things this way or that way. And we don't think past that just because that's what we're told. Uh, so I found that great that you spoke about that because um, a lot of the things that stop us from going further, it's really inside our minds that really stop us yeah. um i mean there's influence but it is really in our minds and like that's something pivotal for you is that your professor kind of gave you that push of that you know kind of letting you know that they don't have the control you have the control right yeah agreed i mean we all mm -hmm. at some at some level have that imposter syndrome don't we you know mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, and, yeah. uh, it, we we can dig deep and find out uh, where it's coming from, uh, but really, it's it's our minds playing tricks on us all the time, because um, mm -hmm. we are we are better than we think we are. We always compare ourselves to other people, and um, I I think that's the stage of my life right now. I, there's just so much business out there for everybody that I don't compare myself to anyone anymore anymore. My, my goals, that's what I strive for. It's my own goals. It's nobody else's. And I'm so thrilled for my colleagues and friends who are, are in the business doing well. I'm, I'm truly just so grateful that they're in my life. And oftentimes, you know, I will use them as, you know, uh, um, just ask to ask them questions of things that I don't know. 
So I don't compare myself to anybody anymore. And I think that was the big release as well. But you got to come to a certain point in your business where that um, you can do that. You can mm -hmm. do that. You know, not, and, not, yeah. and it takes a lot of awareness, right? Because normally, I mean, everyone, <laughs> we don't have like awareness of what's happening until either I feel like someone points it out or you yourself are wondering, you know, why am I doing this? And you start really reflecting on yourself. Um, yeah. So it is very hard. And usually, you know, until, until someone points it out or you start questioning it in yourself, do you really start building that awareness to what what is actually causing it yeah yeah and i've done i've done a lot of work on myself you know uh, mm -hmm. um during that period of time when i could see the writing was on the wall when this business was going to go down and i really loved it um but then you know feeling horrible that i belonged to a business that may have been cheating people and myself and it was just a horrible time and the brain was just going on, on and on and on and just ruminating forever. Um, that's when I sought help because I just needed to calm the brain, you know, mm -hmm. and, and learning how to meditate um, was probably my savior. Um, and and my, my friend Rosa Rag, Rago, R-A-G-O, follow her. She's just unbelievable. And um, uh, Rosa taught me a lot about um being in the moment in mindset and i use that every day every day so. that's amazing that's great and what about so what about fears during your during during the process of being a real estate investor or a mortgage broker uh what kind of fears did you have to conquer i'm assuming one was probably just like that's kind of starting because it, even though you work for winrose is it you still have your own business separately or or is it one and the same thing yeah it's it's separate so i'm an agent um i'm an affiliate agent on claire's team so um and i specialize in real estate investing on her team so she's got her book of business and i have mine um but we all help each other with with various deals um uh so yeah so my i so my biggest fear when I first started was really letting my daughter down. You know, she had just graduated from university in 2018 and she'd seen the struggles I'd gone through. And I, and I, there were so many doors that I could have gone through. And I just, she came up to me and said, you know what, why don't we go, why don't you go back to residential mortgages and um, I'll help you out. So she helped me out with admin, social media, light stuff. And uh, yeah, the biggest fear was, what if I don't have enough business to, to pay her? I could have done without as a, as a typical mom, right? <laughs> I could have done without, but um, um, I, there is no way I wasn't going to provide for her. So mm -hmm. that was, and that's amazing because in itself, that was probably a huge push for you to make sure you're meeting your goals. So kind of like probably like non-negotiable goals, like like you said, like I need to pay my my daughter. So that's going to you know push you to probably just uh, try to get as many sales to say as possible. Yeah, that was definitely uh, a motivator for me, and. One thing that Claire always said to us was to treat this business as a business and to confident, confidently uh, declare that I'm the CEO of the business. You know how hard that was? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm the CEO of this business, but I'm just a mortgage broker, you know? Um, but now... Very scary, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It suddenly became real to me. This is a real business. And then, you know, we just, our, our processes, we accommodate for more growth. We're now, uh, we're now um, training. We have a, a junior underwriter that's just about to jump on and be a full-time underwriter for us. And we've got somebody else who's in, in line for the junior position. So we know that we need to keep, you know, uh, training and growing. And with that, that keeps me motivated. I am the... I am the 
the face of of the Petty John team and the one that's involved with the new business. I chat with every single client that comes through. Um, so yeah, so I'm the one that brings in the business. So it gets, um, yeah, overcoming that, you know, is it, that was a hard one for me. And did you, were, was there anything that you had to, uh, or not had to do, but that, that you did to help those fears or, or you just kind of like plowed through it and kind of <laughs> ignored it as much as you could? <laughs> you, uh, really, Diana, it was just run, go, pick up and go. We had, mm -hmm. it, was, it was March the 14th, it, 2020. And we had just been through a good phase of our business and, and we were being told that everything was going to shut down and the fear set in like you would never believe. And I mm -hmm. thought, okay, I can go one way or another. I'm either mm -hmm. going to uh, rise above this or, we're, or this is folding right now. And like I said, by the Friday, we launched Friday morning chats with Angie and I was consistently getting 30, 40, 50 people. I know this doesn't sound like a lot, but to me that was huge because I was only seeing one or two clients a day before that, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was just pick up and go. That's it. That's amazing. We, we had no time for fear. And and um, our business just flourished during that time frame. Like I said, we, we, we were... Uh, blessed to have a, a, a couple of new employees join us. And, um, and here we are ready, you know, set for another big year when everybody's grumbling that they're having a slow time. Um, we're, we're pretty well known within the real estate circles. And um, yeah, I'm always free for, for calls and advice. And, and I often reach out to real estate investors for advice as well for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's, I think, what the, uh, that's very important is having the community around you because there's so many different types of investors, so many different types of mortgage brokers or agents, real estate, uh, realtors, and having that connection and community to talk really helps because, like you said, maybe some people are inactive, but others are very active. And I know with me, once all these changes started happening in these last couple months, I was out there talking to so many people to just find out what the hell is going on with this market and trying to just get an idea because so many different people see things in different ways or in different phases. You know, some people are in the middle of buying, some are in refinance, some are selling, you know, and so it's just so many different phases and just it's always great to talk to people to yeah. understand what's actually going on. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Not, I know we're going to be doing an event in, in November at some point, and it's mm -hmm. essentially now what? You know, now, now the, so the rates are, are increasing. Now what? What do we do? What are the new strategies that I'm seeing? What are, what are people doing with their money? Um, mm -hmm. It's, what are the uh, trends and things like that? Yeah, yeah. It's um, you got to talk to other people. It's we, you know we don't do everything. We don't do it in isolation. Um, I certainly don't work um, in isolation with my team. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, that's one word of advice for real estate investors is to connect with others, talk to others, form your you know your power team. Um, I have clients who who haven't put a haven't put an offer in yet but they still call me to ask me okay is this does this deal work and we'll go through some numbers with them um that's the big fear is the numbers right now do are they going to work um at the end of the day you got to just set yourself up with um multiple exit strategies um and and that will eliminate the fear and take the emotion out of the buy um it's it's really it's a transact well I hate, I hate saying it's a transaction because um, for me, it's more about the bore. I, it's not the, the actual transaction itself, but for the real estate investor, they, do, they really do need to take the emotion out of it. They cannot personalize that property 
or they get in trouble, you know, they personalize mm -hmm. it and they're spending too much money because <laughs> they want to make it look like 100%. the way they want it. Hundred percent, completely agree. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that investors make is thinking that it's their own house that they're going to live in and not understanding it's an investment yeah. and uh, not spending every penny. <laughs> yeah, on it. yeah, exactly. And then you know, wanting to hang on to something that is going to be a, a money pit. You mm -hmm. just, sometimes you just gotta, um, you know, write off your losses and off you go. Mm -hmm. um, or even the other way around, because uh, I can say by experience, there was a house. It wasn't a money pit. It would it would go like fifty fifty dollars a month that I'd have to put in. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. say it was a money pit, but um, but it was really funny because I had this mentality that I'm going to keep this house forever. It's going to be my retirement home, and and then like that as you get into the real estate groups. And what I love that you said is like treating it as a business. I also do the same thing in real estate. I also now treat my real estate as a business too. And so I, I actually worry about, you know, my, my revenue, the profits, everything I'm worrying about what my margins are um, like that. I treat it like a business and I look at this property and I have others that are cash flowing. This one's only minus 50, which is not really that big of a deal for a house in the GTA because I mean, but in the sense of a business, it wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. And and to to imagine like how amazing it was to make the change to finally sell it. Like it, it like broke my heart to sell it because of just like I had, and, and like the limiting mindset, right? Like yeah. I had, this mindset set that this is I'm never going to sell the property and um, to kind of change that and accept it and then after that coming out with that I went from a minus 50 to being able to buy another property and do a private lend and all together I believe yeah I cash flow to about um, altogether, I was probably making around three thousand dollars a month cash flow. It was like insane. Three thousand or two? Yeah, three thousand. It was crazy. No, no, no sorry, two thousand, two thousand. Um, but it was just crazy. Oh no, it was three thousand. Sorry, because there's another house that I bought with it at the same time before on a refi. So technically, it was three thousand. But on the sale part, it was two thousand. Um, and it was just like if I had never sold that property, I would. I would just be, I mean, probably by now cash flowing, but, mm -hmm. um, but it wouldn't be very much, right? Because it's just like a little townhouse, you know, now I'm going bigger, but it's just very interesting um, to see how, you know, we get these limiting mindsets up yeah. or we just set these ideas in our head that, you know, sometimes it's time to change them. Yeah, and that that's where the the power of the power team comes in, mm -hmm. because really mm -hmm. you'll be hearing it from different angles. Your real estate agent, um, your mortgage broker, your lawyer. That maybe it's time, or your accountant, especially maybe it's time to let that that property go. But if you go mm -hmm. in it with the idea that there are multiple exit strategies, then when the time comes, it's just not an emotional sale anymore. It's, it's done based on your profit margins. Um, and oftentimes, you, you know, w w when I'm seeing flipper, let's say the, the, I don't see flippers anymore right now. It just is one of those things. This market is not allowing for a real nice flip. Let's, let's put mm -hmm. it that way. But when mm -hmm. I was, you know, they're hanging on to, to expensive money because most of them are, are being purchased with other people's money, whether it's first time with a, a first mortgage, private mortgage, and then, you know, the promissory notes and hard money that you come up with, um, it's pretty expensive. So every month can cost you a lot of money. Um, and then, you know, the changing strategies midstream going, oh, it was a flip, but now it's, but now I want to do a burr. That mm -hmm. can add another six months to, to the deal. So, you know, have you done those numbers? So we're mindful mm -hmm. of that when you work with us. We already know ahead of time. You know, we say, okay, you're planning this as a, as a burr, um, but you might need to flip it. And, mm -hmm. and that seems to be the biggest, um, uh, I guess, challenge right now is if, the, if people who are planning on flipping, who purchased, you know, four or five months ago, 
Um, by the time they go to flip or burr it, I should say, mortgage qualifications have changed so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the yeah, we just have to stay on point with the with the exit strategy and not flip around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and um, yeah, and like that. It's just always right now. Things are changing so much so quickly that it's just kind of taking everything, like you said, all these exit strategies, and just taking everything into consideration. And and it's come to a point that it's like you have to be so super super conservative, which kind of sometimes doesn't work out because people are still thinking that they can sell at certain prices. Yeah. And when you're telling them like, Hey, I can only buy it at this amount because of these reasons. Yeah. They're like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so what about any, any uh, limiting mindset, like any mindset uh, changes that you had to make any other ones that you had to change? Well, um, well, the whole money thing, right? Um, when I'm setting, when setting the goals, <laughs> high <Hi>, buzz conference, <laughs> it's Virginia Munden. Um, uh, um, the the whole um, uh, mindset uh, around money, you know, when you set your goals, you're setting them. I would set them lower because who am I to expect? five hundred thousand dollars right so I, I i would lower my expectations because it's unfathomable that i would be able to make that kind of money and and you know through again through um mentors and my business coach and also um my my uh, rosa who i was telling you about i never know what to call her because she's more than a mentor to me um I was was able to overcome that limiting factor. Be clear on your goal. If if you're make if you want to make 500k, don't write down 100k. Put 500k down and mm -hmm. watch what happens. It's really unbelievable. It is. Um, the, it's it's and I don't want to get woo woo with you guys, but the uni universe reacts to our energy and what we put out there. And if we're we're wanting and expecting this to happen, it, things al align. The deals mm -hmm. come in. The people come through your life. The connections happen. And the next thing you know, you know the you're you're on par with the goals that you've set. So overcoming that that I guess again just again overcome the imposter syndrome, which kind of related to the limiting beliefs in, in my mind. Getting mm -hmm. rid of that, having confidence in myself and my abilities and where I stand. Um, and, and you know, um, it, now, now I ask for what I want. I'm clear with what I want. That's how it's I... It's amazing. Yeah. That's how I... So what are your goals? Uh, what are your, like, big, big goals? Like, your five-year goals? Like... <laughs> Well, um, Victoria and I, Vic, well, I'd like to retire when I'm in my 60s, but not retire where, I, like, I'd re like to retire from this business, my mortgage brokering, but I still want to get paid from it. Don't get me wrong. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd like to set up a business, the business where um, I'm still just doing all the networking stuff and this and speaking. I want to do a lot more speaking um, that that is a, a real joy in my life. Um, mm -hmm. So really it's adding more joy. I know that sounds weird. Um, and having underwriters that do the deals, you know, um, instead of just Victoria doing it. So really, really beefing up the, the underwriter part of my business. And, awesome. and yeah. And, and Retiring and and traveling and spending more time with my husband, like really, <laughs> and that's what I want to do. Um, that's this great. Business. And so, what kind of changes do you think you have to make in yourself now to get to that place? I think we're on track. I'm on track with that. Um, it's it's setting the processes in place now so that 
I can do that. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, we've, we've got, I've got a couple underwriters with a third person um, being trained now. So um, that, that will allow for, you know, another five or 10 million de of deals to come in. And then we just keep adding it as, as, as we grow. Um, awesome. So you're taking a lot more of a leadership role, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. And eventually, you know, uh, I get old enough, I'll be put into pasture and Victoria will take on that leadership role herself. Like, that was probably one of my most, um, oh, what's the word? Um, not humble. Most proud, I'll just say the most proudest thing that could have happened to me was Victoria joining and and at her age, she's she's under 30, just being such a powerful, powerful woman in our industry. We had a we had a meet, meeting the other day, and as I mentioned, we're we're launching a podcast soon, and I'll have you on it. We'll reciprocate. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. So we were we were um, researching. Uh, podcasts, mortgage broker podcasts, and the industry is mostly women, but the podcasts were mostly men. And we're like, what the heck is like, this doesn't even make sense. So the fact that Victoria is this, you know, powerful, um, young, under 30 year old woman, um, it, like this, it, there's no stopping us. There's really no stopping us. I think of myself at 28, you know, <laughs> I was nowhere near what she does and what she knows. It's really remarkable. That's amazing. And it's a tribute to you. Well, you know, going back to always wanting to empower, I, I was always looking to empower in a grand way, standing on a stage, doing stuff, but really, when it comes down to it, it's empowering the, the people around us. My daughter and, and you know, these um, uh, Naomi and Kelsey and Caitlin and all these other uh, team members uh, on our team. It, that, that really gives me the warm and fuzzy, true real life people. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I often, when I'm speaking to my clients, um, get, you know, to, to, they give me that feedback that I've, I've, I've helped them in some way. And that's all that matters to me. You know, that's if, amazing. If, if you lead, if you lead with, with true love and compassion in your heart, you're empowering. And that's, that's all I strive to do. That's amazing. Any final words before we go? Yeah. Like, um, I, I'm, I'm really excited for this last bit of this year. Um, don't listen to the media. Uh, there's still some really great deals out there to be had. You got to search for it. Yes, a little bit more work than usual, but there's uh, real estate is still still the game. You know, give us give us a call. Uh, we can help you work out some of your numbers. Um, and if you're looking for someone that truly cares, um, that's uh, that's us. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. It was really nice to hear your journey. And um, we'll see everyone at the next episode. Thank you, Angie. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Diana. Thank you. Bye. Bye now.